Hey guys, how's it going tonight? Hey Lori. My cat's in the background snoring. Again. Alright, so tonight I'm just going to cover um, a serial killer. He actually committed these crimes in 1983, I believe. And he was finally caught this year. He unalived two women. <clears throat> Brutally. Hey, Brenda. Oh, I just figured, because most of my um, most of my guests, like my subs and my members and everything, you guys are all in the States. I have very few that are Canadian. So I would imagine not a lot of you guys would know any of our crimes. I, to be honest, there's a lot of them I don't even know. Yeah, I found a list. It's called uh, Murderpedia. It's uh, it's quite big. Hey, cool gamer. It's really big. So I'm just going to show you this article here that I came across. So his name is um, Joseph George Sutherland. I never heard of him. I didn't even hear about these. Schmurder. So it says suspect in 1983, Gilmore and Tice murders make first court appearance. Joseph, Suther jo Joseph George Sutherland made his first court appearance Friday for the X slang SEX slang of two Toronto women in 1983. I was born in Toronto. I lived there until I was six years old. And that's why I'll never go back there. That place terrifies me. I'll never go back. I have family there. I won't visit. I won't. Last time I went there, I went, wait, I went, I went by myself when I was 18. And I went to go see my cousin in the hospital. She was having a baby. And there's a, like a pack of wolves, it seemed like. They were men. It was a group of them. They followed us into the hospital in the elevator. Oh, it was terrifying. Um, <clears throat> they were in the elevator with us. As soon as we got to the floor, I like I my two aunts beside me, they had my hand and they're like, let's go now. Apparently these people, these guys hide in stairwells to attack women and RAPE them. So I'm, t I'm 18 years old. I'm terrified. I'm like, what the hell? Are you serious? There was a stabbing. It was two doors down where I was staying, blood everywhere. And then I went, um, when my son was first born, never again, never, ever again. Oh, we do, Lori. Have you guys ever been to Toronto? It's, it's way too, like, for me to go from Toronto to, where'd I go? Brockville and then Athens, Ontario, which is like a 5,000 population. It, it was really small, but I'm grateful. I love where I live now. This is the guy. Um, this is him. He's 61. He appeared by video link at the old city hall courthouse Friday afternoon, but he has not yet secured a legal aid attorney, and the matter was put over until December 16th. So I have to keep my eye open in two days for this to see what happens. So he, Sutherland 61 is charged with two counts of first degree murder and the deaths of Aaron Gilmore and Susan Tice. Tice is 45, was murdered on August 17th, 1983 and was, and was discovered unalived by a family member in the upstairs bedroom of her residence. <sighs> she was SA'd and suffering from stab wounds. Gilmore, 22, was murdered on December 20th, 1983. She was found unalived by her friend in her bedroom by a friend. She had been essayed and stabbed to death. People like him don't stop. You know what I mean? <clears throat> That's a serial killer. I wonder if there's any crimes. Any more, I mean. So it says in 2000, police linked the two murders to one unknown suspect from the DNA left at the scene. Sutherland was arrested in Mossini, Ontario last month. That's crazy. I'm in Ontario. That's scary. That scares me. 
As relieved as we are to announce this arrest, it will never bring Aaron or Susan back. And on behalf of the Toronto Police Service, I want to again express my condolences to their families. And this is from Chief James Raymer. And it was said at the media conference on November 28th. Toronto Police homicide detectives have never stopped investigating these reprehensible crimes or seeking to find the person responsible. What was it for that article? Hey, Patricia. You've been to Ontario? Hey, autistic. That's why I live is Ontario. Like, Canada's a beautiful country. You just have to watch where you live. Um, I live in a very small town, and I'm happy here. <laughs> I won't ever go back to Toronto again. Like I was saying, no way, no how. No way. I couldn't raise my son in that environment. Like, there's certain things that happened to me there that was really scary. I was almost kidnapped. There was a van circling around me. <sighs> My dad's girlfriend at the time had to come. Luckily, she had brains and bitched on my father and said, what the hell are you doing leaving your two little girls there? I was six. So my sister, or no, I was seven. So my sister was four and I had babysitter. Can you imagine? He just let us go all like two blocks away by ourselves. Um, we're in Toronto. Kidnaps happen daily. So she came and got us. And we, of course, I was upset because... I didn't understand and I didn't realize, but there was a van circling, like the creeper van. You know what I mean? That ugh. I just know I'll never go there again. Too many bad memories anyways. <clears throat> I got a couple more articles and then there's a video. <laughs> Great. Somebody's got the zoomies. <laughs> so in this case, a man accused of 1983 Toronto cold case murders put over to next week. I'm assuming this is a video. Well, you said right. You're going to ruin my house, guy. We're able, we're able to use, to use investigative genetic, genetic genealogy. Genealogy. genealogy going through the advances in science going through the going through the, how the only way that this was solved was, was the advances in science we're able to genetic genealogy to narrow down a suspect to narrow down and from there we we're able family. to narrow down a suspect who is obviously under arrest today now that suspect has been in Ontario for 39 years since these murders. So obviously we're gonna look into every possible connection to any possible case throughout Ontario to ensure that he isn't responsible for any other offenses. There's a publication ban before the court, so I can't tell you too much, but he is 61 years old and he was living in Moosonee now. At the time of the murders, he was living in Toronto, um, but he's moved throughout Ontario during the last 39 years, um, resulting in him living in Moosonee at this point. You know what? That's all under investigation right now. We want to make sure that we cover everything off before we put it out to the to the media. I believe that's another video. There's the two victims. <clears throat> You're cooking. Hey, Dev. Thank you, Country Girl Brenda. That's amazing, thank you. They said just what I said. Um, they'll need to, well, look for other victims. I think that, well, obviously I think they should. I wouldn't imagine it's normal protocol, but I would imagine there are just because they're, I don't know. He sounds like the Night Stalker, you know, comes through the bedroom, does this thing, murders them and then leaves. I don't know, I think there's more. I feel like there's more, I really do unfortunately but the thing is what um what i'm happy about with this case it wouldn't have been solved without dna like um what the hell amstry.com and what's the other one ancestry that's not amstry <laughs> it 
kids as three.com. So that there, a lot of people have been getting their kids from that. And because of that, a lot of people's DNA is on file now. Oh, my cat's name is Ash. He's a black cat and he's male. He's going, it's Ash. He's going nuts. He's got the zoomies. It's funny. But yeah, because of Ancestry, they've caught quite a bit of people now. Like, that's how they caught the uh, Golden State Killer. All right, I'm going to check this video, too. I missed this one. Never Never mind, it's not another video. It was just the two women at the end. So it's just, again, the same thing. It just says the case of a man charged in the murders of two Toronto women who were found unalive 40 years ago. Yeah, he's 61 now. There's another one I got, I'm going to do on, is it tomorrow? Maybe Thursday, maybe Friday. One day this week coming up, and it's Betagonia Mandel, and he finally got caught as well. And now he's he's going to prison. So he's in the Toronto South Detention Center. Still has no legal aid, though. His request is still pending. Yeah, they're there. Is that boobs? What the? That's a teacher with those boobs? What in the hell is that? What? School board aware of possible protests over Oakville teachers' attire as a dress code. Oh no. Hey, Joe Bean. Joe, I haven't seen you forever. I'm glad you made it. Yeah, did you see them boobs? <laughs> what the hell was that? They were like, oh, where's my camera? They were way, way, like, way out. They look like balloons, to be honest. Yeah, it looks like a butt in the front. Sexual kink shit at high school. Blair White did a big thing on her. Oh, really? Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they were among us. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay. You thought your boobs were big? I feel much better now. <laughs> I just showed this. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. So, yeah, again, same thing. Toronto case of man charged 40 years ago. He's now 61. And Moussini. Nothing different. I just want to make sure. So it was published December 9th. Okay. I don't know these women. I don't even recognize the last name. Yeah, see, it says right here, investigators said advances in genetic technology helped them crack the cold case. That's awesome. I'm glad. <laughs> they are fake he she does not need to wear just doesn't claim so safe not oh okay i was wondering that's a bit much here's a okay there's a video here i'm going to show as well
If I ever, 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 ever get that right. <laughs> yeah, you're something my dumbass. <laughs> Every time. Look at the stuff. <laughs> oh, up here. Okay, I found the video. <laughs> oh my god! Not I found the video. I'll sh I'm sharing the video now. <clears throat> Every time, I swear. We will be providing an update on the 1983 homicides of Susan Tice and Aaron Gilmore. Sean and Kaylin McCowan, Aaron Gilmore's brothers, are also here today, and Sean will provide some remarks. Following the remarks, we will take questions. Chief. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today, we are here to announce that the Toronto Police Service has arrested an individual for the 1983 murders of Aaron Gilmore and Susan Tice. Last Thursday, November 24th, this individual was arrested and taken into custody in Moosonee, Ontario, and brought back to Toronto on Friday, November 25th. Joseph George Sutherland, 61 years of age, of Moosonee, has been charged under the 1983 Criminal Code with two counts of first-degree murder for the deaths of Aaron Gilmore and Susan Tice. As relieved as we are to announce this arrest, it will never bring back Aaron or Susan. And on behalf of the Toronto Police Service, I want to again express my condolences to their families, including Aaron's brothers, Sean and Kayla, who are here with us today. Since the tragic murders of these two women back in 1983, Toronto Police homicide detectives have never stopped investigating these reprehensible crimes or seeking to find the responsible. Susan Tice, 45, was murdered on August 17, 1983. Susan was discovered deceased by a relative in the upstairs bedroom of her residence, sexually assaulted and suffering from numerous stab wounds. Erin Gilmore, 22 years of age, was arrested on December 20, 1983. She was found deceased in her bedroom by a friend that evening also sexually assaulted and suffering from numerous stab wounds. It was in the year 2000 that detectives were able to link the two murders of, of one unknown suspect thanks to DNA left at the scenes. Shortly after that, in 2008, Toronto Police announced a $200,000 reward for any information that might lead to an arrest. In 2016, we again made another appeal for information about these crimes, reminding people about the reward, but again, it was met with no success. Meanwhile, Behind the scenes, Toronto Police investigators were using advances in DNA technology to begin narrowing down a list of suspects. This was painstaking work which Detective, St Detective Sergeant Steve Smith from our cold case unit will speak about shortly. We are proud to say, at the very least, that the persistence and dedication of our investigators, of the persistence and dedication of some of our investigators, some Operator here. <laughs> I just think it's fantastic that because of DNA, they caught him. I'm just, I don't know. I have a feeling there's more victims. He sounds like the Night Stalker. He really does. Just going in there, doing his thing. Right in the bedrooms, too. And they're both found unalived in their beds. I mean, I would imagine there's more because these hap this happened with these two women. This was in 1983. I don't know. I just feel like there's more because those type of people don't stop. I mean, they're called serial killers for a reason. I'm retired to have passed away who never gave up finding the individual responsible. For our investigators, the victims and their family, families are never forgotten. I wanna thank and recognize the members of our Homicide and Missing Persons Unit, and in particular, our cold case team and forensic identification team, past and present, for their steadfast commitment over so many years to bring this person to justice. This demonstrates that the Toronto Police Service will never give up on finding people who commit crimes in our city. Thank you, and I would like now to invite Detective Steve Smith up to provide some remarks. Thank you, Chief. My name is Matt. I'm a missing person in the cold case. 
of all, I'd like to reiterate what the chief said. I'd like to thank our team. Um, they're very diligent in their investigations over the past three years. Um, our investigators, our genealogists, our forensics officers, and I'd like to thank the uh, Ontario Provincial Police for all their support as well. They've, uh, they've helped us out immensely in this um, investigation. We'd also like to thank the Solicitor General's Office. Um, they provided us with a, uh, a grant for community safety and policing, um, specific to genetic genealogy. This has helped us to hire investigators, um, genealogists that work full time that help us with genetic genealogy. So we're gonna to speak to the advances in science that helped us with this case. Obviously it's been 39 years and numerous investigators have worked on this case. Um, going through this case, I'll tell you that the only way that this was solved was the advances in science. We we're able to use investigative genetic genealogy to narrow down a suspect family. And from there, we we're able to narrow down a suspect who is obviously under arrest today. Now that suspect has been in Ontario for 39 years since these murders. So obviously we're gonna look into every possible connection to any possible case throughout Ontario to ensure that he isn't responsible for any other offenses. But the IgG in this case has just showed us that uh, previously unsolvable cases are now solvable by the advances with science. Uh, this case into itself is probably the most complex case that I've ever worked in my 25 years. Um, we sent this down to Othram Inc. for SNP testing at the same time that we sent the Jessup DNA down. So this is how much longer this has taken to solve this case. It just goes to show that IgG is not a magic bullet, but it does provide us the ability to continue working this case and to follow the evidence to lead us to the suspect. Just in continuation, we're speaking about the investigation and we're speaking about the accused, but this case is really about the victims, about Susan and Aaron. And saying that, I'd like to invite Aaron's brother, Sean McMahon to the podium. Hey, Teresa. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That was my Oh, no worries. This happened in 1983, Patricia, <clears throat> and he's just being caught now. I would imagine that would be a... He didn't start with M either. There are a lot of other victims building up to the R and the M of these two. Really? Yep, they always evolve. <laughs> yeah, he apologized. Like, I don't care. I thought it was funny. He walks and I was like, <laughs> no, he didn't break anything. He just dropped his, um, he had a spoon and then he had an empty water bottle and then i don't know what else he had but it just fell he had too much in his hand he's bringing all the stuff from his bedroom in the kitchen okay so the victims are going to now talk i haven't seen this so i don't know if you're going to need tissues or not i don't know i'm just glad they got an answer now and i really hope there's no more victims but something tells me that there is Good morning, and thank you very much. I'm Sean McCowan, and I'm here with my brother, Kaylin, and Aaron was sister. On behalf of Aaron's family and many, many friends, we're all very, very happy that an arrest has obviously been made in the vicious murders of Aaron and Susan Tice. The last few days have brought, brought around a full spectrum of emotions, as you can imagine, and this is a day that I and we have been waiting almost an entire lifetime for. In a sense, there's a real relief that someone's been arrested, yet it also brings back so many memories of Aaron and her brutal, senseless murder. Aaron was our sister, she was a daughter, and she was an amazing friend to everyone around her. She had a magnetic personality, was a natural beauty, and was always full of life and looking for her next adventure and bringing people together. At the age of 22, she had her whole life ahead of her before she was killed five days before Christmas. She never had a chance to be an aunt to her four nieces and three nephews. She never had a chance to live her life, never get married, never be a mother, and never had a chance to see what could have been. It was an incredible life to be lived that was taken away from her and the rest of us. We will always wonder what could have been and miss her presence and miss growing old with her. This arrest finally brings an answer for all of us to almost 39 years of asking who. Our mom Anna passed away two years ago and she would have been so relieved that there had been an arrest and so happy that someone will finally face justice after being anonymous for 39 years. Aaron's murder stayed with her and it was very, very, very difficult for her to talk about it. She lost only her only daughter and she missed Aaron every day. It finally puts a name and a face 
to someone who for all of us has been a ghost. It's truly incredible we are here today. I don't want to say that any of us ever gave up hope for almost over, almost over four decades, we began to wonder if we would ever get to this resolution. We're so thankful that technology finally caught up, provided the a TPS, a new set of clues, and ultimately an answer. We cannot thank the detectives at Cold Case enough. We are many thanks to so many over the years, and I'm sure I'm missing some, but Rocky Cleveland, Von O'Toole, Ray Zarb, Greg Groves, Reg Pitts, David Gracie, Bob Wilkinson, Steve Ryan, and of course, Stacey Gallant, Andrew Groves, Steve Smith, who I owe special thanks to for taking my calls and answering my questions at every time saying, we just need more time. Until just a few days ago when I received the best call I've ever received. You all never gave up on trying to solve this case and we are grateful beyond anything we can ever express. I'd also like to thank all the people in techs at Parabon Labs and Authram for their dedication allowing the science to help resolve these painful chapters in our lives. As well, many thanks to all the journalists we've spoken to over the years who helped, who helped keep Aaron's case present and relevant. Aaron and Susan are finally getting their day. Thank you, Sean, for your words and uh, uh, your faith in us. So for all homicide investigators, there's a credo that states, and I quote, no greater honor will ever be bestowed on an officer or a profound duty imposed on them than when they are entrusted with the investigation of the death of a human being, end quote. The original investigators, Rocky Cleveland and Ron O'Toole, and many dedicated detectives and detective sergeants, past and present, know this honor. They believe it, they live it. And they live it not for just for a day or a week or a month. They live it until the case is solved. Our fine officers will continue to work these cases and they will continue to be professionally relentless this and every day. And we're all grateful for their, for their dedication to not only their craft, but to the citizens of this city. We'll now open uh, for questions, please, and thank you. Oh yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He cleans up his room. Can he have a talk with my kids? He's a great kid. I really locked out. I really did. Uh, his room's never a mess, though. He, I think, <laughs> my clean freak uh, caught on. He caught on to my clean, clean freakness. Um, so every night he'll come out, whatever he has in there, he'll bring out. Usually it's just like a water glass, um, root beer, a plate, wrappers, whatever, and he'll bring it out. I got him in the routine of that. You need to talk from him. <laughs> Hey, Brittany, you're still at work. She was found almost the same time as she was unalived. That is what I believe for helping get an answer from beyond the grave. Also, if I make mistakes, I can't see what I'm typing. My eyes are like, oh, no worries, hon. I, I, um, I understand what you're saying. Okay, so she was found right. Well, yeah, they were both found right away because they were both um, schmurdered in their bed. Me too. Finally, it took, what, 49 years? Hello, Brian. You can four kids, three boys share a room. Hey, Brenda Paws. Yeah, you just gotta, I don't know. I don't know how I got him to really listen. I, it's, it's a routine. He's always been the type of person that has to have a routine. He's been like that since he was a baby. He does not like change even since he was a baby. Like I remember whenever um, I was with his father and we would sometimes go to um, my ex's parents' house. So we would sleep in the bed, but every time my son slept over there, she slept because he was a baby, he was little, right? So he would be a little toddler running around like two, three, four, whatever. And he would sleep in Nanny and Papa's bed. Even though I was there with dad, he, he couldn't sleep with us. He had to do the routine and go sleep with Nanny and Papa. It was so weird. He's got to follow a routine. The older kids, like my kids get, the less they like. Yeah, I've always been clean. It's, I don't know, everything has to be tidy. I've always been like that. I don't know if we're going to be able to necessarily hear the comments, but we will be able to hear the answers, um, like the questions that they're asking, because it's from the audience, right? 
they clean better when they're little. They wind, but now they just do the illusion of clean. <laughs> There's a publication ban before the court, so I can't tell you too much, but he is 61 years old and he was living in Moosonee now. At the time of the murders, he was living in Toronto, um, but he's moved throughout Ontario during the last 39 years, um, resulting in him living in Moosonee at this point. Can you talk a little bit about what he was doing with his life in Toronto? You know what? That's all under investigation right now. We want to make sure that we cover everything off before we put it out to the, to the media. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, as the deputy said, you have faith in the Toronto Police Force, and did that when I was there. As the deputy said, you had uh, faith in the ability to the dedication of the of the investigators at uh, the Toronto Police Force Station, and you had that same dedication and faith when I was the officer in charge of this investigation. And what does that say to you as far as? never giving up, and that's something you and I spoke of many times, and to other families out there who are waiting for that same phone call from the detective sergeant, what would you say to them, those that are living on the edge, waiting, if, if that case is going to resolve, that person's killed by lots of life, what, you went through 39 years ago. Well, I think, I think as, as Steve alluded to, and, and the chief, you know, the technology finally got us to a space where it allowed the detectives here to be able to pursue this guy. Um, without that, I'm not sure that we ever would have found this individual. You know, he was literally a ghost. It was, you know, not someone on the radar, and, uh, and, you know, I, 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 and I don't think we ever gave up hope that, that the detectives here would ever stop looking at it. You know, you never did, the team never did. And it's been passed down through the team for almost four decades, right? And, uh, and so that really speaks to the doggedness of, of Toronto Police. It also speaks to maintaining faith and, and just wanting to get to the final resolution and get a final answer at the end of the day to get justice for Aaron and Susan Tyson, others out there. This technology is incredible in that it's allow, going to allow a lot of unsolved cases to get sort of hopefully push farther down the road and open up new avenues for them all. So. Well, I, I, th I think, Steve, that, that, you know, as I've said many times over the years, this is something she would have done for me. And, and I think, um, you know, we, our family never wanted to give up on her and, and never let her memory sort of, for lack of a better word, never wanted this case to be, you know, sitting on a, on a, on a shelf in a warehouse and just never be followed up. And as I said, you know, you know, so many thanks to go to, to Toronto Police for able to sort of being able to push this forward and not let it sit on a, not let it sit on a shelf and, and be unresolved, you know, and it's a, and it's a thrilling, for lack of a better word, it's a thrilling day for our family, our friends, and, and everyone involved to finally get here. And, um, and as I said, I think Aaron would be, you know, my mom, Aaron, everyone would be so happy that we finally got this answer after all these years. Can you talk about that uh, technology, how, how it works, how you got to here? The process of I... It's so, like, it's such an awful story, what happened to these two women. And I, do, I just, I don't think that the story is over yet. The one thing that amazes me and I'm really glad about is it was solved. I mean, how often do these, you know, does this ever happen? It really doesn't. And I was saying earlier, right? I'm like, um, how I was going to do Canadian cases because most of my subs and members and stuff are from the States. Sure enough, I have two that popped in today. That was awesome. Oh, my son did that one time, Deb. Shoved them right into the bed in the closet. I'm like, oh, you little brat. <laughs> You're a stacker and a stuffer. You have too much craft stuff to be. Yeah, I'm crafty. I've got a, well, I have it, my stuff in the back room and I've got, oh yeah, I got a pretty big bin, but it's in the bin. We have been working on my office. We turned my closet into an office and turn a bedroom into a laundry room so everything is like, oh, that's awesome. Not you, your kids. <laughs> Hi, Gigi. Yeah, what is it? So basically we take uh, DNA that's left at a crime scene. We send it down to, well, I mean, there's a number of labs, but um, in this case we used Authram because they use the best possible technology, which is full genome testing. We send it down to be changed into, instead of an STR match, which we use at CFS, it's a, uh, um, a SNP test, a single nucleotide polymorphism. So that allows us to use the genes between the genes to have familial connectivity. And we're able to use that to utilize people that have 
uploaded their uh, DNA to, um, to family tree DNA. And we utilize that to develop family trees. And we have to develop our trees backwards to find the most recent com common ancestors. And then we have to find out how the families are intertwined through marriage or birth. <clears throat> so now they do that family tree. That's good, though, that they have that. Because it's getting a lot easier uh, to find these people who've done these crimes. And not only that, like what I was saying earlier, that's how they caught the Golden State Killer. Yeah, your house is old. I definitely know that, Lori. Yeah. We're on day one of four days of wet, heavy snow. Yeah, we got a big ass blizzard coming. <sighs> Not looking forward to it. The beds in the closet. I tend to shove stuff into boxes to sort through later and stack things into Eiffel Towers and put it away. <laughs> I'm kind of like that too. That's what my back room is for. Well, it's still pretty tidy. So yeah, not really. I'm annoying when it comes to that. Like I annoy myself. I don't know. I can't handle it if I push a book off or something. All, all you guys are crafty, eh? It's awesome. I got too much craft stuff and I even gave some of it to family, but you can't tell. <laughs> I think it multiplied the graphics. <laughs> And towards our suspect. At that point, we switch back to regular STR testing where we do one to one matches through CFS to ensure that we have the proper person. Yes, we obtain the accused DNA sample at some point. I mean, I'd just be speculating at this point, but there is 39 years. Um, this was a four month window. So you can do your own math on that. There is that possibility. We're gonna look into every pro prospect of that throughout Ontario, not just in Toronto. Luckily with the Jessup matter, we have already gone through that process where we were able to take that and look at the, the person that was found to be responsible for the Jessup murder. And we had to go back in their life and go through everything in their life over the course of the 40 years. So we've got a process for that and we're going to do that. Um, we'll be contacting all the other services in Ontario where we believe that he's resided or visited and we'll be going through all the cases all the way back for 39 years. Can you imagine that's going to be a lot of work <clears throat> to go through all those cases for 41 years? That's going to be a lot. Oh, I wish I was there and I could like help them. <laughs> I'm so interested in this stuff. I don't know why. I just always have been. I love it when the bad guys get caught. So one of my genealogists likes to say that genealogy is like fishing. Um, you never know how long it's gonna take you to catch a fish. Um, we, do, we utilize our process and there's a lot of different things that come into that. It depends how many people are up on the sites that we can utilize, because there's only two sites we can utilize for genetic genealogy, um, how much open source data there is, and in this case, um, because he was born in a small town, we had endogamy to work with. So we had to work through a process of endog endogamy to bring the, uh, the Centimorgan matches down to um, where they should be. They were showing too big of a match there. So we had to work through that process. And then it also depends on the size of families as well. So there's a lot of variables that go into that. Can I, can I ask you, since the victims under the size of the traffic Canada, but these are all the victims, so mm -hmm. the public does not have the position to see the central to make other changes that make on the electronic on, on the charge, on the, on the notion that uh, Oh, I'm very confident. Um, in Toronto, we've developed a very stringent set of rules that we utilize for this process. Um, this isn't something that we just do. We've developed our own set of rules and we stay within that process. If our case does not fit in that process, we don't utilize that case. So we stick to that case, we stick to that process, and we're confident that if it's tested in court, we'll be able to defend it. Um, he, he was actually arrested by OPP for us. Um, it, it was, there was no issue with the arrest. Um, he was taken into custody. There was a, there was no issues whatsoever. Um, and we went up and, and picked him up. That he was arrested? He was arrested in Moosonee, Ontario. He, no, he was living in Toronto at the time of the offenses. Yeah. He moved back to Moosonee. Yeah. Can you comment on the powerful message that 
not only does this then do suspects who are out there that should probably be sleeping when I open it, but to those families that have commented earlier that are waiting for that phone call. The deputy set up some other, you never do give up. You, you literally never do give up. Can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely, Steve. You know the number of cases that we have in Toronto, and our team's in contact with the families um, of most of the victims on a regular basis, and that's really dependent on the family. Sometimes it's weekly, sometimes it's monthly, sometimes it's yearly, depending on the contact that they want with us. But yeah, I mean, any of these cases now are open to being solved. Will we solve all of them? Probably not, but we're going to give it our goal. We will do everything that we can to solve every case that we possibly can. Does the suspect have a family? He does. Um, well, I don't want to get into his, his actual, but yes, he, he did have a family and he has a family, uh, an extended family, um, most of them living in Northern Ontario as well. And who was the family member who made the last week? How um, well, I don't think you're understanding the process. It's not necessarily that it goes back to a family member. We're able to utilize the DNA from the scene to identify a familial unit. From there, we're able to narrow it down to the possible suspect. It doesn't mean necessarily that any of his family's DNA was on file. No, he, he was not in our boxes, as they say. Um, he was not a suspect or a person of interest in this case. If we hadn't used we never would have came to his name. Just to clarify, um, there was a question about the other DNA. They want to get the DNA. Did you serve any other DNA or did you go to the first one? Uh, I'll tell you, in this one, we served him with a DNA warrant. Okay. Did you, the, the picture from the orange jumpsuit, is that him taken while I was that a photo? No, that's a picture of him taken upon his arrest. And where, where is he now? What's going on? It'll be in the media release, but he has a, uh, a court case in early December in Toronto. And just in terms of this, Microsoft, this four years ago, so you guys would have, in your, uh, I guess, your brother mentioned that you got the sample of the city. Yeah, it's pretty Yeah, that picture <clears throat> of um, Joseph being in custody and having his picture taken, he's like smiling in his orange jumpsuit. Best way I am. I gave my kids enough to start a business. Holy crap. <laughs> I'm always so glad when they solve these cold cases. Those victims deserve closure, closure and so that yeah, me too. It actually it's it's surprising and it's so nice to hear because it doesn't happen often. And that's why I keep even though it's not a Canadian thing, the Golden State Killer, that how long was that going on? Forever and ever and all those victims and because of genealogy and because it was because of um, ancestry.com how he got caught because i don't think he would have been hey anna they shut down the little boy captain cory channel so we are tweeting to get it reinstated he is the little boy who made a wish to have to you're kidding me how could they do How could they do that? Wow. Oh, absolutely, Brenda. I um, I have to interact with you guys. I can't just sit here and watch this and be like, no. <laughs> Claire, you want to be grounded? Here, lay there. There you go. Lay on the blanket. I'll pet you. Just don't call my computer, girl. No, I love having, um, I love interacting with you guys. I find it's, it's a, I don't know, it's just what, what I do. I couldn't imagine having a channel where you never talk to your audience. Like, that's just crazy. She doesn't yell at us to stay on topic or get blocked. <laughs> yeah, I remember you saying that, Brenda. That's awesome. Oh, are you making your bed? You haven't made your bed in years. <laughs> you have sold some things. Not a lot, but I like to make things for family and friends. That's how I am. My son made something for my, my mother and my grandmother and then his nanny and papa. Yeah, that is gross. Why would they do that? What was the excuse? How? I, I don't understand. Oh, you don't know? Aw, 
I went to get my license renewed the other day. The guy said I could smile in the photo. I asked him if I could cry because that's what I do if I got a ticket. <laughs> that's something I would do. <laughs> I'd be like Molly. <laughs> wasn't that far the town wasn't that far from you it just amazed me that that he was caught it was amazing Well, I wish we had tens of thousands of uh, DNA samples. It's it's a finite number of cases that actually have um, DNA and even a smaller amount that has offender DNA. So we to, that's part of our process for this, is we have to be 100% sure that the DNA we're utilizing is the actual offender. Because as you know, in these crime scenes, there's numerous DNA um, samples that could be there, but we have to be convinced. And that's why we chose this case and the Jessup case as our first two cases, because um, unequivocally, there's no way that the person involved in this could justify the fact that their DNA is at the scene. I don't want to get into it too much, but as Steve was saying, um, I think when you commit these crimes, you're just waiting for that knock to come at the door. Um, so you'd have to speak to him inevitably, but um, if I could sense it, it would probably be one of relief that it's finally over. <laughs> I've been asked that question a few times and I don't have the answer to that. Um, just so you know that there's a lot of people with the same names um, up in that area. So it could be, it could not be. I, I, I don't have that answer right now. What cases are you working on? So we have over 700 cold cases. Of that, we have 43 that have known offender DNA. Um, right now, utilizing the Solicitor General's grant, we're able to put 15 Toronto cases forward and 15 cases from the rest of Ontario forward per year. So over the three year grant, we'll be able to put 45 cases. Now saying that we have a mix of unidentified human remains, sexual assaults and homicide cases that we're working on, but that's the approximation. And we're in the first year of the grant. So we're, we're just in the about 15 cases that we're putting forward. I'm gonna take one more question. Hey. Uh, I don't wanna comment on, uh, on other investigations. Thank you. That was the last question. This concludes um, the conference for today. Thank you for joining us. That's insane. Over 700 <coughs> cases unsolved. Thank you all for being sweet and kind and understanding. You've all been so great for me. Duh, we're awesome. <laughs> yeah, me too. 40 minutes away. Ah, that's so creepy. Hey, Trio. Oh, I'm just talking about a serial killer who finally got caught. I did my own laundry last night including reaching down into the barrel of the washer to get the laundry. I'm so proud. <laughs> my sister might say I look like I am constipated. <laughs> my, I look like I, I looks like a mug shot every time I get one because I don't know if you can smell or not. And I never asked. So now I know you can. So next time I'm like, <laughs> because I look like I committed a crime. <laughs> Yeah, they do. They have a lot of work. Over 700 cases. Oh my God, your name's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. I hope with this new team, um, they got a lot of people on it just for the fact that there's over 700 cases. He said, what? He thinks there'll be 45 solved in the new year. Was he nice about it being Canadian? <laughs> yeah, it was very nice, actually. Yeah. I agree. I hope they suffer, too. I have a feeling, though. I mean, he is a serial killer. I have a feeling there's more. And I hope 
in those 700 cases that he, you know, it helps solve some other crimes for people too. Here I am, Paul. I'm going to show you a list of our male serial killers, okay? I didn't realize there were so many. Contextual each other. <laughs> the show Cold Case for Steve from that show used to be donated to. That's amazing. I did not know that. Thanks for telling me that. So this website is called Murder Murderpedia, and this is all the men that are all all the men that have killed. I know a lot of them. He's got one victim, 93. Mark LePen, why does that sound familiar? Mark LePen? When were you caught? Holy shit. December 6, 1989, 14 victims <clears throat> for Mark LePen. Why do I know that name? That one, the Luca Magnata, Luca Magnata. Um, he, uh, I can't, that one, oh my God, it, I had nightmares for months, I'm telling you. Um, what was I going to say? So he's the one that was harming cats, okay? And they came out on Netflix with a series, um, it wasn't, a, I think it was a movie, or no, it was a series, and it was called Don't F With Cats, okay? And it was because of him. Um, he only has one person that he murdered. And it was a young man and what he did to this person i i i seen it and the reason why i seen it is because there was this i was looking up this murder that he did because it was canadian right and at the time i'm like okay well this is the sh this is the netflix saying don't f with cats and so i was looking it up somehow some way i got to this website that had the video, he videoed the murder. I'm not kidding. Oh my God. I thought it was fake. I didn't realize I'm going, what? That website's now shut down. I reported it, but I saw it. What he did to that young man. Yeah, it didn't start or stop with those two. Exactly. People like that don't just quit. Do you remember that? Well, I didn't realize I was going to be watching. I never watched the Don't F With Cats because I knew it was going to be bad. I, any form of animal abuse, no, I'm out. I can't. I can't do it. My heart can't take it. It's, but that and when it comes to ch my heart can't take when it comes to children either. Now, this kind of thing. It's it it still gets me, but not as bad. When it comes to animal and children, oh my god, I'll be I'll have nightmares for the rest of my life. I can't believe I watched it though. That they I and it was real, like what he did to that young man. I mean, I tell you, but I don't want to give you guys nightmares. <sighs> this is a list. I um, because I'm going to start a crime series with a member of mine. <clears throat> so we're going to do all the like go through all these cases. She picks one, I pick one, we go live and talk about it. Paul Bernardo, three plus victims. Oh, yeah, he's had a lot. I'm trying to see if I know any of these names. Cook, Robert Raymond Cook. I know a cook. It's not spelled that way though. Oh. I know a Durant name too. Durant. 
Bobby Jack Fowler, that piece of shit. Nah, he's got more than one. He's remember he's the one that did all. He's the one that had all those murders that I was reading the article and all that stuff on my other live. There's a hut, Mark Peter Hut. I'm related to a hut. December 5th, 2009, one, one victim. <laughs> Nelson, <clears throat> new parent, Robert. Picked in that one was horrible too. A lot of these I don't know about. Warren West Williams Woodcock. There's a whole list of women too. I just don't know how to get to it. It says female murders. Yeah. This is just A, I think. Yeah, it is. Oh my god. United Kingdom. Oh, there's one in Canada. <clears throat> Two things. Is that? <clears throat> we have 26. Oh my God, stop. I know Carla Homoka, piece of shit. I haven't heard of any of these ones. <laughs> Sorry, I'm hush. No, I love it when you guys talk. I'm glad that you won't share because that stuff makes me sick and angry. Oh, I, I didn't want to watch that. Like I said, I didn't know. Yeah, I think it would be cool. Interesting. These guys are all caught, though, which is fine to me. <laughs> they, uh, I read the book. The book is horrible. Um, they had victims as young as 14. My classmate, we were at a reunion. The cop came and arrested him. He, oh, he was a serial error and mur Wow. I got pink wallpaper for my office today. I, well, take me to the river. I love pink anything. It is crazy, right? If you murder more than one person in different places at different times, you can bet they are serial. And I'm very sure he has unlocked many more than two women over the years. So do the Oh, damn right. Because he was in, he started in Toronto. Now he's in Moosonee. Mus just try. No, there's, there has to be more. I just, I don't think it's just two. And I don't think they do either. These women, though, I don't, I'm, I don't know any of them. Melanie Alex, Catherine Andrus, Nirmala Debbie, or I don't know. I was gonna see, what did this girl do? Used a meat cleaver to inflict more than 50 blade wounds on a guy named William. 
sentenced to life in prison, no parole, el elibidity, elibidity, <laughs> eligibility for 12 years on April 27, 2014. So she's out. There was no explanation for the attack and no apparent motive. This was in Vancouver. Okay, I think that might be the one that um, my friend's going to do. Two victims. Uh, hers happened in 2001 and 2003. Her arrest was May 16, 2003. Her wheelchair bound mother, Francine, <gasps> and her one year old son, you motherfucker, smoke inhalation. She set the house on fire. <laughs> you bitch. She's very dangerous, He's, the brother said, of the sister who murdered their mother. There's no limit to what she'll do. Holy crap. Why? Yeah, arson charges. So she set the house on fire. She tried to blame her brother for the house fire on her mother, and then she set another one on fire for her son? Holy I I can't with Oh, wow. Yeah, Anna, they do. Exactly. <clears throat> I mean, people are, are, like, the police and the, like, law are understanding that now but <sighs> this is a long list of men and women that we gotta cover i should just do one every day probably take me what a month <laughs> two months maybe three she should brought in there she was in quebec Tried to tell everyone she's a victim and tried to persuade, persuade the jury she was a victim. This person, Catherine, she's got one victim. No motive was given for the murder. She's got one victim. Date of arrest, September 13, 2010. She killed her husband by beating him with an aluminum baseball bat. Why? She pleaded not guilty to first degree murder, but guilty to the lesser charge of second degree murder. Okay. His own, oh my God. Yeah, no reason was given for it, but court heard that the couple did suffer from financial difficulties, including her gambling problem. Are you serious? Wow. People are nuts. I know, right, Teresa? These people are all caught. Yeah, this is um, all over Canada. Like, I'm going to do the ones all in Ontario. And Jill's going to do the ones in Vancouver and stuff like that. It's so scary. What people can do, it doesn't make sense to me. I just do, don't understand if someone can take it. I don't either. You have to be heartless, cold. I don't understand it. I could never do that. 
ever. These women haven't, oh, there's five victims. Who is this chick? She was caught 2011. What would you do? A mass murder, arson. Torching a rooming house. So a Norman, Maureen, Kenneth, Bradley, Dean, Robert. Wow, they're all gone. Method of murder was fire in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. What was the bullshit excuse? I'm just reading to see if there's any use. Like, what the hell? Apparently, she wanted to unalive two women, but instead murdered five. Yeah. I wonder if Winnipeg is still that one. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, save yourself or save something. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I went like that because I can't even stand to look at her name. Holy shit, 100 plus? Oh, she's an old one. Oh my God, it's the fucking baby farmer. Oh, yeah, I know all about this one. Baby farmer, the ideal maternity home was a source when illegal trade in infants between Canada and the United States. 100 plus babies. Method of murder was starvation. Oh my God. On March 14, 1936, was charged with two cans of manslaughter in the January deaths of Eva and her own newborn child, allegedly caused by negligence and unsanit unsanitary conditions at the home. Acquitted. Oh, wow. Acquitted at a three-day trial in May 1936. Convicted on June 5th, 1946 of illegally selling babies to four American couples and fined a total of $428. And she died of leukemia, leukemia in 1967. Canada is known to these idiots. Like, seriously? Wow. I forgot about this one. Unsanitary conditions, running a fucking baby farm, right? And they still let her. What the hell is wrong with Canada? They need stricter rules. This is bullshit. The statistics Canada data show that Saskatchewan was the only province with a higher rate at 5.93%. Of the 61 homicides, 45 were in Winnipeg. Holy shit making the city's homicide rate the third highest among metropolitan areas. The only two ahead of Winnipeg were Regina and, Thund Regina and Thunder Bay. I'm glad it's not Ontario. No, they did nothing to her. And the thing is, is it's, it says that she, her house was investigated for these certain conditions and that her two children died and they let her do it again. Like go back to and having these children, like what the hell? Yeah, because this says right here, she was charged with two cans of manslaughter in January for the deaths of Eva and her newborn child, allegedly caused by negligence and unsanitary conditions at the home. Why the hell did she get acquitted for that? 
And then she gets convicted 10 years later, exactly, 1946, of illegally selling babies to four American couples. Gets a fucking fine of $428.90 and dies of leukemia in 1967. Stuff like that pisses me right off. That I don't know, Deb, actually. It didn't say so. Here, I'll keep reading it. Yep, I think you're right. At age 26, she met and married William Peach Young, an Oregon native transplanted to New Brunswick, where he aspired to the role of an Adventist medical missionary without benefit of ordination or medical training. He became a licensed chiropractor. Started, he moved back to Nova Scotia, opening the Life and Health Sanitarium in East Chester in Halifax. My aunt and uncle, all them live in Halifax. She, oh my God. So she entered service as a professional midwife and their establishment was soon re-Christian, the ideal maternity home and sanitarium with William acting as a superintendent and Leah or Leela as managing director. Oh, hell no. Yeah, you're right. That's what it was. Regina is six hours away from Winnipeg. Yeah, Thunder Bay is in Ontario. My bad. I don't, like, I haven't been there, and, yeah, I keep forgetting that. It's far away from me. That's good. Thanks, Brenda. I can't believe they, she didn't get nothing done to her. All right, Claire. Yeah, you remembered exactly correctly. Yes, you did. What they did was they acted like, well, he was a chiropractor. That was it. And she acted like um, the director. Can you imagine? No, you're right. So I'll have to get into that. I will cover that. Definitely. Makes me so angry. When, like I said, when it comes to children and this one. Oh, I did see that one. Man, your breast stinks, Claire. Tuba Muhammad. The Crown alleged the family's patriarch was upset that his two eldest daughters wanted boyfriends, betraying his traditional Afghan values. Four victims. Oh my God, I remember this. No, I don't. There's two of them. Kingston? That's like 45 minutes away from me. It's so scary that they're like all... Her three daughters, 19, 17, and 13, and Rona, Muhammad, are the victims. Who's... How did you drown all these people? The fuck? Oh, wow. Okay, so they were found inside a car that was discovered underwater in the Rideau Canal. She must have drugged them or something.
honor killing my ass. I don't care. It says here she was trapped in an abusive, loveless marriage, trying to convince her husband to grant her a divorce. That does not give you the right to kill your children. Anyone for that matter. That's disgusting. You know, we came to Canada as refugees. They picked Winnipeg by closing their eyes using a map of Canada pointing. Um, it's obvious to pick the middle. Yeah. We had something like that here in Philadelphia. A girlfriend dumped a boyfriend and he unlocked her sister who was in a wheelchair by setting them three. <gasps> oh my God, I mean, you, wow. Chili is what you consider your home. Yeah. Same here. Me too, Brenda. I called a fuck up too. Mercy killing my ass. Are you kidding me? That's like the other one. Oh my God. There's a, on Netflix as well. It's um. the said murders of his two daughters. He killed them both. It was horrible. It was so sad. They were so beautiful. They were just the picture they have of them. I don't know why I thought that was the Canadian one. That's, I don't think it is. No, I really I don't think it is. I'm just going to look that up. It was in 2008. Holy, it was that long ago? 2008, really? Beautiful girls. You hear water running? That's my heat. The daughter called the police as she lay dying. Oh, wow. We know if you guys remember this one, son of a bitch. This guy. Amina and Sarah. <laughs> he was upset that the girls were dating. Disgusting. My son's talking in the background. He's got a huge big mouth. <laughs> He's playing a game with my nephew. Do you guys remember this? Those are the girls right there. She had, oh my God, her eyes were beautiful because they were green. 
So because they decided to date, their father decided to shoot them. There's like a documentary of it on, um, yeah, I remember that. They were called while dying. Yeah, you're right. There's a documentary on Netflix about it. If you're interested to watch it. I watched it. Broke my heart. He <laughs> like his huge big mouth. <laughs> I realized I probably came off rude, but I'm really not. <laughs> he does have a big mouth. He gets it from his mother. <laughs> I'm big mouth and he's just mouth. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Deb, right? I remember that. That's what I was thinking when I was reading um, about the woman that did it to her own daughter. Like, are you big <laughs> talking about cops doing something. John, oh, yeah, that's his newest show, The Hunt. John Walsh had him on his show, yeah. It was so sad, though. I don't know why it got me, this one. I just... I think just being, you know, a parent, that is your own flesh and blood. How could you, oh my God, you know what I'm going to do actually, if I'll go through them though, to make sure that they're okay. But if you guys are interested as well, we can do, um, we can listen to like true 911 calls. There's a few that I want to punch the operator. There's a few that are happy. A lot of them are really bad really sad. This one woman, she had stabbed her daughters. And they, and then she calls 911. She says, hurry up because one of my daughters is still alive. And bitched at them, said, hurry up. She's going to die. What the fuck? Yeah, I can't stand him. I don't watch anything. No, I won't. Then after reading this book and finding out the stuff he did, you would love to hear them. You guys want to listen to them? Okay. They are interesting. I don't know how he gets them. He gets them for the most recent everything. I mean, I don't know what he does get them. Some of them are really bad, though. Like, really bad. Um, a woman was schizophrenic, but she wasn't diagnosed. And she heard voices telling her to kill her baby. So she put him in the oven and turn it on. I'm not kidding. And then stabbed herself in the stomach, I'm pretty sure. Ap yeah, after. Then they caught him, I was glad that, yeah, me too. Okay, we can do that tomorrow. I do have a live, I can't remember which one though. Yeah, that pissed me off, broke my hair. I'm like, are you kidding me? The girl was really sick. I get that, but I just, man. What pissed me off more is the family knew she was like that. She was sick and she kept telling them, take my kid, I'm going to hurt him. They wouldn't listen. I blame the family for that one. This woman was really sick. She was hearing voices telling her that he, you know, to do this to her baby. Tomorrow I'm gonna, I think, yeah, I have all day tomorrow, so I should be able to do a members live. We can do that, um, the, uh, the suitcase one. Maybe listen to some calls. So I'll set that up for tomorrow. Oh my God, in Ottawa, remember that? He's, holy shit, he's free? What? 
Of course he is. Yeah. That's he went at him with what was it a machete? Remember that? Oh my god, I didn't realize he was free. I thought it'd be you know at least somewhere. Yeah, seriously. Everybody was on the bus. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm gonna end it here, Brenda, because um, I don't know why they let him. It's Canada. They are, they don't. I don't think they know what the hell they're doing. Yeah, I'm probably gonna end it here. So tomorrow I plan on doing a members only. Um, it'll probably be in the morning. Yeah, I have looked into that. Yep, there's documentary on that as well. I believe he did it. Absolutely, Benita. The guy was shot, lady called the police, hysterical. The operator told her, don't like your tone and hung up. Yeah, that's what I mean why these phone calls are going to piss you off. I have heard one where this woman went into the river. She was stuck in her car and couldn't get out. She was on the phone talking to 911 operator. This bitch hung up on her. Seriously. And told her, listen, don't yell at me. Don't be The girl's in the, she's going to die. And sure enough, she died. I couldn't believe it. It pissed me right off. Oh. Tim McLean. Okay, there you go. Yeah, there's the link right there. Leoni Simon has been indicted by grand jury for death and disposal. You have the book. What was his name again? It was um. Can't remember. I know his face. I can see his face in my head, but I can't remember the name. Or years. There's so many cases. Like it doesn't have to be Canadian. The reason why I picked Canadian is because most of you guys are from the states. You don't know, and I figured you'd find it interesting. Yeah, I don't understand. Or charged no how is that possible he definitely pushed her down them stairs it doesn't the, the splatter everything it doesn't it doesn't add up all right i'm gonna get off here i do have a live tomorrow night and it's i think it's the um I don't know. <laughs> I think it here. I'll check. What the hell do I got going on tomorrow? What's today? Fourteenth, right? Yeah. Okay, so tomorrow's going to be Haunted London, and I was going to use that ghost box again. And if you guys wanted to, we can um, watch some more of those um, <laughs> those idiots from BuzzFeed. <laughs> they crack me up. It's always nice to laugh at the end. You should, Brenda. It'd be interesting to see. I'd love to see it. Yeah, she was charged, and so was the grandmother. All right, guys. Thanks for coming. You have a good night. I'll be back tomorrow sometime. Just keep your notifications on. All right. Have a good night, guys. Bye.